So much passion. <laughs> Aaron it's Taylor Gina, sits right? down. Jeez. What 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 did I step into? Hi. So a hot box. Let's get your take on this. So the news came down. Aaron Taylor joins us, former Notre Dame star, Super Bowl champ with the Packers, NFL stud at Aaron Taylor CFB. The news came down today that uh, Liberty, Ole Miss, and Cincinnati, and Cincinnati are all going to have their pro day on the same day, March twenty fourth. So what? NFL executives are upset about that. Oh my god! Because yeah. those are three of the stud quarterbacks, right? Like, and I get that this this quarterback class people view like down here, whatever, but. Right. They're going to be first-round quarterbacks taken, right? Like, so you need to evaluate this class. Isn't that weird? It is weird, but I, I think college football, it, it's uh, uh, it, one of the problems that we have in our sport is that everybody's out for themselves. Now, when you're scheduling these things, you're working around a bunch of different stuff, and you got to slot it in for what makes sense for you and what your spring football schedule is and who's going to be in town and recruiting and all those sorts of things. But, again, part of the problem we have as a sport is that there's no unification. There's no one voice. Everybody's about themselves, and we've seen that on the Power 5 level. We've seen that within the Power 5 level of the alliance that the, the, the ACC and the Pac-12 and the Big Ten have made to try to compete with the SEC because they're worried about Oklahoma yep. and Texas coming in. It's like it's a hot mess, man. So to me, this is just emblematic of an, uh, uh, of an even bigger problem that we have within our sport and that that's that there's no unity in something that's supposed to celebrate tradition and rivalry and pageantry and togetherness. Yeah. Speaking of all those things, I'm glad you sat down. Um, so this <laughs> is this is not going to come off the way that I want to because Notre Dame has been really, really good and playing at a high level lately. Oh, I'm bracing but, my but, already No, no, no. Yeah, Aaron, it's, it's already Aaron, bad. It's already Aaron, bad. <laughs> people our age, like Notre Dame was like this mythical thing, right? So I'm curious, like, how much did it mean to you to put that Golden Dome helmet on the first time? How much did it mean to you to take that first snap why at are, Notre Dame? Why are you walking me down the road of what the <laughs> hell happened in Notre Dame? Like, that's what he's doing. No, no, right? no. no. It's a no. tee up. It's, yes, it is. It is. I mean, we'll get to Brian Kelly and dancing at LSU and all that <laughs> See? stuff. No, I'm just saying, as a college football fan, I always wondered, like, what was that like? Mm. It, it's a tee up before I get kneecapped. I know. I'm familiar with it. Um, I'm familiar man, with I got to tell you, like, running out of, of the tunnel yeah. and tapping the play like a championship you know, the play like a champion today sign. Like, that moment for me as a true freshman underneath the lights yeah. against Michigan. It was the first night game Whew. at Notre Dame in 1990 for, in, like, 30-plus years. We had to bring lights in. There's no lights at Notre Dame mm. Stadium. So, like, that moment, and I had somehow worked my way up to the second team as a true freshman. I think it was more because the guy in front of me was a fifth-year senior that my coach didn't like, and he was trying to send a message. <laughs> but regardless, <laughs> I got to dress. Whatever. Right? And, Whatever and, works. And I ran out on the field, and I'm like, it's night, and I'm looking, and it's in pregame. And I see those ugly-ass helmets <laughs> of Michigan, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm on the field. Yeah. Like, that's Michigan. Like, they're there. Like, I'm here. Like, it was a surreal moment of, like, I'm actually yeah. here. Like, this is going to happen. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, dear God, I hope I don't have to play today. Like, don't put me in the game. I was so nervous. But we came back, and Rick Meyer ended up on the cover of Sports Illustrated, Golden Boy, and that yeah. famous pose that he had. And um, I, the thing that was memorable about that moment for me, and it's great that you asked me that question, we came back into the locker room, and it was a last-minute drive. We scored right before the game ended to take the lead. And Holtz brought us all up, and we're all celebrating. We're 1-0. and And he says, see, if you follow the plan, we'll never no. lose a game in no. this stadium. No. Follow the plan, man, and you will go undefeated in Notre Dame Stadium. Oh, my gosh. And that was the moment we all bought in, hook, line, and seeker. He had this plan on how we win. We got out hit in the seven areas. Don't turn the football over. And special teams and missed assignments, blah, blah, blah. But that was like – it was an iconic moment for me on so many different levels, especially because I was 17 years old and didn't know what the hell I was doing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's was fu it's so funny because my kid just got back from an official visit <laughs> in Charlotte, and, and Lou Holtz's granddaughter 
works in that program. Love it. So, uh, yeah, it's just great. I mean, great you stuff. know, you'd never understand understand how many players can imitate their coaches. Like, it's always <laughs> one on your team, like, man, do it, do it, do it. Like, it, And you got it. You had to be that dude on the team. Hey, everybody's that dude on the team. <laughs> and, and you almost feel cheap because it's so easy. But it's yeah. like it's, it's easy money. You got to go it. to it. You got to yeah. do it. Got to do it. All right, so this is where we trans, uh, transition with Aaron Taylor, too. What's your reaction when you see Brian Kelly in these really tight areas, like dancing with players and stuff? Man, I want to go take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, this I, wasn't supposed to go this yeah, way. Yeah, it's not, that's not supposed to happen, and I'm not supposed to be this captivated yeah. by it. Like, I, I yeah. cannot not watch it. Yeah, and I keep Multiple watching times. it. Yeah. And yeah. Like, I keep watching. Yeah, it. Like, my wife's looking at me like, "What the hell are you doing?" I'm like, I can't stop watching. I don't know. What what's happening? Right. I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> um, man, like, uh, I, man, I don't know what deal BK's made with the devil, but he's like, screw it. I'm gonna sell my soul to the devil. We're gonna win two national championships. I'm gonna hump a little kids in a 360, and we're gonna ride off into the sunset. Oh That's it. That's it. It's just crazy because like he seems so much different in this stuff than he ever was at Notre, at Notre and, Dame. And, and the that's, southern accent. Oh, bud, my family. Yeah, my, how are my family doing? That's what did I had the boudang and the, the chitlins and the the, the crab fish uh. etouffee. Man, like I've never, and I've been guilty Woo. of this. I think this is human nature. Like for any of us to be successful at anything, we have to be our authentic selves. Yeah. When yeah. we try to be or become something other than we are, mm -hmm. we're just going to come up short. And I'm as guilty of that at times in my life as anybody else. So when I watch what's going on with BK, I'm like, Dang, <laughs> bro. Reel it back in because he has been excellent and exceptional about delivering messages and about, you know, the way that he speaks publicly. Like, he could walk into a kitchen with a knife in his hand and there's a dead body on the floor. He'd be like, BK, did you do it? He'd be like, well, let me talk about this. And, yeah. and he'd talk his way out of it. But, like, he's down there like the old guy in the club at 2.30 when the light's on, you know, with these recruits, and it's like, what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> but I, who knows? The last three head coaches have won national championships, Ed O, uh, Les Miles, and mm -hmm. I think BK is at least as good, if not quite a bit better, coaching both those dudes. Right. So who knows, man? The Tigers probably won it all for three straight years. So what's your message, uh, Aaron Taylor, walking around uh, Radio Row today? Oh, uh, man, football's a people game. Yeah. Like, we're all here. We want to see great skilled players and defenses and Aaron Donald and all that stuff, Joey Burrow. But, like, what the essence of our sport is people. It's laughing. It's conversations. It's the rides home in the bus after mm -hmm. the game or yep. the practice. And Jim McMahon, who's rolling up in here in a wheelchair because he's got something going on with his foot. We were together in Green Bay and won this ring together. Um Kyle Turley and Robert Gallery, all these different offensive linemen, and, and Ryan Harris, who's now in the media, was a great player at Denver and the Pittsburgh Steelers and from Notre Dame, and he was a, a mentee of mine. Like, I was working with ABC and went to interview him because he was a Muslim kid at Notre Dame, and he was this biracial mixed Muslim kid at Notre Dame. It was wow. like, let's do a story on that. Yeah. And we stayed in contact, so... Like, what's great about this is we get to laugh, we get to tell some stories, we also get to talk about some things that matter all around the greatest game ever created. I love it. Aaron Taylor with us on 3HL. Hey, great to see you, man. Appreciate you. Well done on the Lou Holtz, well, man. That, that might, that that might pop on. back up on the show. Oh, know. man. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> get some licensing rights. <laughs> At Aaron Taylor, CFB. Give him a follow. Thank you, buddy. Thank you.